Welcome to Real Estate You with Letty Ann. Really grateful and honored to have Jason Hartman on our show today. Jason is uh, one of the top real estate investors in the country. He may not agree, but there are several of us who do agree. And welcome, Jason. Thank you, Letty Ann. It's great to be here. Uh, there's a lot going on in the uh, economy right now, a lot of fear. Uh, as you and your listeners know, the stock market is going absolutely crazy in reaction to the coronavirus scare. But maybe that's just some fundamental things in the economy. So, uh, you know, happy to jump in and talk about that or uh, some of the investing techniques that I think can protect people, uh, regardless of which way the economy is going. Uh, so uh, glad to be here. Wonderful. Well, why don't we start with what's happening today in the world? And uh, what's what's your opinion on that? How is that going to affect all of us in, in, in the real estate industry? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, uh, you know, the economy has been booming for uh, over 10 years now. And many people think that we are late in the business cycle. And they're probably right. Uh, but uh, after the Trump election, the party just kept going. Uh, and it, it, you know, probably it was it was due to end if you're just looking at it from a business cycle perspective. Um, but now, uh, the markets uh, have really started reacting. And when I say the markets, I'm talking about the stock market because it's got, uh, you know, there's a lot quicker reaction. So it's a much faster barometer uh, to see what people are thinking out there, what are, what they're concerned about and so forth. Uh, the real estate market and what one of the things I love about it, and you probably do too, Letty Ann, is it just kind of keeps chugging along. You know, it's very consistent and it's just a, a, a wonderful thing. So I'm not a fan of stock market investing by any means. But it is an indicator that I think it's important to pay attention to of what people around the world think, what they fear, what their concerns are, what their level of uh, expectations are for the future. And, uh, you know, with, with that in mind, um, one of the guests I had on my podcast last week, as the market was just crashing, 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 and it, it you know, still looks like it's going in that direction, uh, was saying that the coronavirus isn't the uh, reason for the sell-off. This was his opinion. He said it's just an excuse for the sell-off because a lot of people were concerned that the market was overvalued and they were simply using that as a rationalization to now sell off, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know, um, but I think, I think there is some uh, legitimate concern if you go beyond this current thing uh, that, you know, we may have that problem solved in a couple of months. Who, who knows? Uh, we've been through many scares like this throughout history. Uh, but, you know, there are some fundamental issues going on, um, especially with the Chinese economy. All these economies around the world are built on a house of cards to one degree or another, including the U.S. economy. Uh, so uh, they're, they're very tender because the markets uh, it, all, all of the aspects of the economy, rather than being based on real fundamentals, like, uh, you know, a house is worth what a house is worth. And a house is worth that much because of fundamental things, like looking at the ingredients of the house, lumber, concrete, copper wire, petroleum products, energy, labor, all the things that go into a house, glass, steel, whatever, right? All of those fundamental things have been financialized in so many ways. So, so much of it is now dependent on a financial economy versus a real economy. Kind of think of it as the difference between Wall Street and Main Street, right? Main Street is where real commerce happens. Real value is traded. Goods and services are traded. But Wall Street, on the other hand, creates a bunch of derivatives on all that stuff. And all of those things, those derivatives, and we've all heard that term before, I, I, my super simplistic definition to that, Letty Ann, is a derivative is nothing more than a thing about a thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a very sophisticated I, I like definition. your definition. <laughs> yeah. It, it's the thing about the thing. And when you have so many things about the things about the things about the things about the things, everything is so far removed from reality. That's the world we're living in. And it's not just the U.S. economy. It's every economy. It's, it's just absolute craziness. And, you know, uh, a little over 10 years ago, when we were in the Great Recession, 
we saw that. You know, we didn't know the kinds of games these joker, jokesters on Wall Street were playing uh, and how it, it wrecked the world economy. I mean, the country of Iceland, a country, a country went bankrupt. <laughs> you know, imagine that, right? right. Uh, and uh, and so there, there are definitely causes for concern. And, and what I say is uh, people need to be prudent. They need to be careful. They need to be conservative. And Letty Ann, one of the things that uh, is sort of counterintuitive when I say be conservative and be prudent with your money and with your investments is the idea of debt. And uh, debt can be good or bad. I like to say debt is my favorite four-letter word. <laughs> okay, and, uh, debt can be good or reason, bad. Okay, that's good. It to can know. be good or bad. <laughs> yes, it can be good or bad. And uh, the the reason it's my favorite four-letter word because as a real estate investor, we can really make debt work for us and make it just an absolutely beautiful thing. Uh, so uh, that's what we want to do. And I, I'll be happy to dive in and explain uh, my idea and how you do that for your listeners. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if there's something specific you want to cover, so I'll, I'll let you. This is exactly it. My One of my questions uh, to you would be, what's your forecast uh, with what's going on today? What's the forecast look like, in your opinion, in for 2020? But yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Um, you... And I welcome your thoughts about especially if we can turn this negative into a positive, like taking that debt and how can we make good of it? How can we turn that into a positive? So I really would welcome hearing your thoughts on that. Sure, sure. Well, the thing we have to understand uh, first, I think, when we talk about real estate is that real estate is not a single concept. It's not a single soundbite. And so many people uh, listening to or watching us right now might be thinking that, well, you know, the real estate market, they hear these these people go on TV and talk about the housing market, the real estate market. And in the United States, you have over 400 real estate markets. And they're all very different, but they can be categorized into three categories, linear markets, cyclical markets, and hybrid markets. So those act very differently, those three types of markets. And uh, th the danger is that people lump these things together. And if they lump these things together, they will get incorrect answers time and time again. So it's a very dangerous thing to do that. So what we want to do is uh, we teach people to focus on linear real estate markets. These are the conservative, prudent markets where uh, you can buy a property today that makes sense from day one. It makes sense the day you buy it. And how do you know if it makes sense the day you buy it? Well, you'll know by the rent to value ratio of that property. And we like to try and uh, buy properties with our investors that rent for approximately 1% of the value every month. Okay, so 1% per month is simple, right? You can calculate that. It's a quick rule of thumb uh, by saying, look, if the property is $150,000 and it rents somewhere around $1,500 a month, give or take, that's going to be a pretty good investment. Okay, most of the time. I've got, I've got, I've got one of those, Jason. So yeehaw. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. good. Yeah, actually, I have two of those. So I'm, I'm good. I'm loving this, uh, loving this talk. Excellent. Good for you. Good for you. So, um, uh, you know, what, when we when we hear on the news about the real estate market, most people are talking about the real estate market in these high flying cyclical markets that don't make any sense at all. Now, cyclical markets would be pretty much the entire West Coast of the United States, from Seattle down to San Diego and everything in between. Okay, those are cyclical. The expensive northeastern markets, New York, Washington, D.C., Boston, those types of places. Uh, South Florida, where I live, but not quite where I live. It's south of me, about 90 miles. But Miami would be a cyclical market. OK, these are markets we would not recommend in a million years. They're too expensive to invest they're too in. Volatile. To yeah, to invest. To invest. In. OK, yeah, they're too expensive. They're too volatile. If you want to live there, that's fine. But I'm not talking about where you want to live. I'm only talking about investing. OK, mm. they're too volatile. They're too cyclical. They have terrible cash flow. They have terrible rent to value ratios. OK, if you invest in those mm. markets, understand you're not an investor. You're a speculator. You're a gambler. Ooh. And look. 
I, uh, nothing. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Oh, I have well, I have one of those in San Diego. Ouch. Ouch. Right, right. Well, Ouch. well, listen. I, I want to <laughs> clarify. I want to clarify something. Okay. Yeah. Don't be too concerned on the ouch on that. Okay. Because look, at you can make money speculating and gambling. Okay. I've made quite a bit of money, millions of dollars <laughs> speculating and gambling, and I don't gamble per se. Mm. But in doing speculative real estate deals, I've made lots of money. I'm just saying that the strategy I teach is a conservative, prudent strategy that provides yield and income and cash flow, okay? So cyclical, linear, and hybrid markets. The trophy markets around the country and around the world are cyclical markets. Whenever you hear somebody talking about the real estate market, they're probably talking about a cyclical market because those are the newsworthy markets that make the headlines, okay? Around the world, cyclical markets would be places like Paris, London, Dubai, and Hong Kong, and Singapore, and, and there are many others, okay? But those are the main ones. So we don't like investing in cyclical markets. We like investing in linear markets. Hybrid is just in between the two, okay? Uh, so, uh, so we've gotta be extra careful right now and very prudent um, the economy was already long in the tooth. It was already far out into the business cycle, probably went four years beyond a normal business cycle in the real estate market or the stock market. Uh, so uh, you could say just from that perspective alone, it's on borrowed time. Okay. Mm. Um, then you add to it some of the structural problems in the economy, especially with the Chinese economy, which is obviously a big deal. And then you add another layer of the scare of the coronavirus, and that's a recipe for some real problems. But here's the interesting thing. If you buy in these prudent linear markets, you're going to have a property that makes sense no matter what. Most of those markets fared very well, and the rents held up very well during the Great Recession, the worst economy in 70 years, okay? Those markets did pretty well. Mm -hmm. The bloodbaths were in all the cyclical markets, like L.A. and, uh, and you know, Orange County, where I used to live, in San Diego and San, in San Francisco, to maybe a lesser degree because of the, the tech influence. Um, but, uh, but you know, uh, New York, now we've, we've seen that market declining quite a bit. Um, Miami is, ex is experiencing some real signs of uh, problems. So, invest in conservative linear markets. If you want to speculate with 10, 15, maybe 20% of your wealth, you can do that in those crazy cyclical markets. Uh, but we're talking about investing today. So here's the, here's the interesting thing. With the coronavirus scare, do you know that the day that that really hit the stock market, the stock of Zoom was up? OK, um, the companies that provide these virtual meeting opportunities like we're doing right now are are doing pretty well because they cater to a way that you can communicate germ free. OK, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I, and this is I can't this even is hug not you. A stock tip. I can't yeah, hug. I normally is, hug my no, guests. No, <laughs> and you're not going to breathe on me or sneeze on me either. <laughs> and, and, and this is not a stock tip, but what's interesting is that I've been reading announcements the past several days about companies around the world telling their employees to work at home, okay, so that, so that the contagion won't be a problem, right? Keep working. So Don't come in, it, but keep working. Keep working, but work can, from home. So guess what? What do you think that does for us real estate investors, right? If, you know, if there's more pressure to work from home, and certainly there's been a movement for a couple of decades, the work from home movement has certainly, you know, millions of people work out of the house nowadays, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's no stigma to it. Uh, my company hasn't had an office since 2012. When our last le office lease expired in 2012, everybody just wanted to work at home. So I said, fine, why am I fighting the trend? I don't want to pay for an office that nobody wants to come into. Uh, so everybody went home. And the thing that does is that it makes the home the necessity item. And if you if you live in a house right now, say someone listening lives in a two-bedroom house, and they have a roommate, for example, 
And uh, and if you've got to work at home and that's going to be the new, new thing, right? And and there's it's really moving in that direction, which it has been for a while, then maybe you kick your roommate out and you think, I'm going to use that second bedroom as an office. Mm-hmm. And now the roommate has to go get another place. So that increases the demand for housing. Okay. Uh, And and I've always said the reason I like housing and it's my favorite real estate investment versus office space, uh, industrial space, um, you know, uh, uh, retail properties. Obviously, there's a retail apocalypse going on now. Look, at they can outsource uh, all of the uh, office workers and say, go work from home, or, you know, we're going to hire a company in the Philippines or India so we can have cheaper labor. And, uh, and that lessens the need for office space in the U S. Um, the retail can be outsourced to the internet and we all know it has, you go through retail centers nowadays and it is one sad thing to look at. Very sad. I mean, Em- empty empty spaces everywhere for lease signs all over the place some of these shopping malls uh the, both the malls and the and the strip centers have become ghost towns i mean it's really it looks like it's out of the twilight zone or something sometimes how devastating uh, it is desolate. some of these yeah yeah it re- it really is mm-hmm. that's the retail apocalypse for you and um, and then um, industrial properties, you know, the, the need is lessened for them to some extent with the workers being outsourced. You know, China has become the workshop of the world. And now Africa is becoming the workshop of the world. Uh, I've been saying for a while now that Africa is going to be the new China. Okay, because now these companies are starting to look to diversify their risk, okay, and have the part of their supply chain not just in China. You know, we got trade war issues to think about, um, we've got uh, epidemic issues to think about, and they want to diversify that workforce. Plus, wages have gone up in China. Okay, it's not as cheap as it used to be, uh, and uh, and there's a rising middle class in China. So the next place to go look for inexpensive labor, Africa, right? And uh, and all of that lessens the need for uh, commercial property space in the United States. And the thing everybody still needs, guess what? A house. Food, clothing, and shelter. Shelter. <laughs> so let them rent that shelter from you. It's a great message. I mean, that is. Like, I could listen to you all day long, which you can at jasonhartman.com. This information is below. Uh, so, no, and, and keep going, please, because I, I love the education. I'm learning. I'm, I'm just listening with bated breath here. Uh, so I want to know more about your school, where people can find out more about you, what you're teaching. Um, and I know you like to educate. So this is great. Yeah, I do. I, I love this stuff. I love studying and learning stuff and sharing it with other people. That's really my thing. You know, uh, I don't have other talents, but that's one people say I do have. Uh, so um, uh, my podcast is probably a really good way to follow my work. Great. Uh, I've, I've got a YouTube channel, but podcast is big. It's called The Creating Wealth Show. And you can just look up Jason Hartman on any uh, podcast platform and, and find me. The crea- and, um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to reiterate that to our producer. The Creating Wealth Show is Jason's podcast. Just want to be sure everyone out there knows uh, where to connect with Jason on several several different levels. So, great, right. yeah, and um, and and then uh, the website is jasonhartman.com. Mm-hmm.